Hello, this is a key stage three topic. We're looking at specialized cells. Um, this topic falls within a cell topic um, and it's a subtopic of that. Um, what we're looking at are what are specialized cells and how do they adapt to become specialized cells? Um, so if you look at different pictures on the screen, what are the different shapes and sizes? So we're going to look at that in detail today. You will notice that all of these um, cells have a special role, as hence they have a special uh, shape and size. So the top one here are called red blood cells. Um, they are disc-like structures. So you can see um, the outline is quite flat and they have a large surface area. Um, and the red blood cell job is to absorb as much oxygen it can bind with the hemoglobin to become oxyhemoglobin to transport around the body. Next, we have a sperm cell here, and you can see it's got a sharp head and then a long tail. Now, the sharp head um, has a job to go through um, into the egg, and hence the job of the tail is to swim. And if you look at the structure, it's like a streamlined structure that allows it to go um, when it's swimming to, um, to meet the egg. Here we have the nerve cells. Again, it's a massive large structure. Um, with large surface area with the nucleus and the dandelion at the bottom. Um, we've got structural leaf. And then here we got a root head cell. Again, it's got lots of surface area. It's quite long ending uh, in order to absorb minerals and nutrients and water from the soil. And then the final one is a pollen cell. So as I said, these are red blood cells. They are red in colour because of the haemoglobin. And if you look at them, they are flat disc-like structures. They're hollow. Here is kind of hollow shape. Um, they don't have a nucleus. It gives the reason being it gives a large surface area, and its role is to bind with oxygen and to transfer around the body. These are palisade cells that are found in plants. Um, they are green in color because they have chlorophyll in them and the role is to absorb the sunlight and have disc like structure again a large surface area the larger it is the more sunlight it can absorb and you probably know that the sunlight um the green color and the sunlight is needed for photosynthesis this is a nerve cell um you can see it's got lots of surface area spread around it's got the exon on the bottom connected to the main cells uh, um, depending on where it's going um, and it's again spread out, it's got the nucleus which has got the main information and the whole structure is called the cell body. These are sperm cells as previously described, they have streamlined structure, um, they have got little heads here which has got the nucleus and then they've got this tail here to help it swim um, to uh, fertilise the egg. Um, they are streamlined because they are really, really fine structures. They can swim quite fast because of the shape and size. In this structure, you can see the sperm cell that is trying to go through the egg cell, which is also known as the ovum. Um, so you may see the word ovum or egg cell in the exam. And uh, the head of the sperm is quite pointy, so it can get through the cell um, membrane here so it can puncture and get in so it can then go meet the nucleus of the two of the sperm cell and the egg cell so it can fertilize. Um, in this slide we've got the root hair cell and you will see it's got a large surface area here this bit here to absorb all the nutrients these um, bits around are the soil and its job is to absorb um, minerals and its job is to absorb all the liquid so it can go into the plant through the stem. And you can see the, the, the thin cell membrane. So the thinner it is, the easier the absorption can take place. And we normally use um, dual roots like a little thread-like structures when we represent them. So they are quite thin but have large surface area.